So you want to be a jazz band leader. Well, I am one and have been one for most of my life. So this is a good video to be in because I've got six questions that you need to ask yourself before going down that road. And this was prompted by a long post on one of our YouTube videos by someone in high school, a senior in high school, who says, we would all like to continue graduating, playing together as most of us are seniors in high school, and I would like to lead a small jazz ensemble. And I thought that was a pretty good idea, but my anxiety levels tell me otherwise. And then he goes on to say about going to university and the jazz program and getting gritty and trying something new, but I feel like I need reaffirmation and even more advice because I have a lot of questions and anxieties. And he keeps using the word anxiety over and over again. So I'm gonna cover that in this video, but these six questions are very important if you're thinking about going down that road because it's all about being a leader, a jazz band leader. So let's get started. Here's number one. So why do you wanna do that? And I think this is the most important question is the reason why you pretty much do anything, including being a jazz band leader. And there's really only six reasons to do anything. The first one is certainty. You wanna avoid pain and get more pleasure. It's a reason that is a little bit suspect because I don't think there is really any certainty in anything, but that typically when you go into something would be a reason to do it. The second one is uncertainty. You want a little change. You want to shake things up a bit. And I think that might be the reason why this particular reader is going after it because he wants to just get gritty and, and messy like he talks about. The next one is significance. You really want to achieve something so that you have a sense of accomplishment and in the eyes of other people, you look like a significant figure. The next one is for connection. It's like you wanna create relationships and friends and you wanna have deep connections with other people. The next one is growth, which is essentially you wanna learn something and get better at something. I think that's one of the reasons why people choose jazz is because it's a never ending process of growth. And then finally, it's all about contribution. You want to contribute to the world and contribute to the legacy of jazz. Okay, so those are the six reasons why you would wanna do something. So ask yourself, what is the reason why I wanna be a jazz band leader? For me, it would be significance because I wanna create something new and I wanna leave a mark. I wanna leave some intellectual property behind, some projects, some recordings, some charts and, and arrangements and compositions and all of those things. And to me, that, that just spells significance. All right, let's move on to question number two. Are you feeling insecure or immobilized? And I know that our reader talked about the concept of anxiety. That's really what I'm talking about, insecurity. Well, insecurity is basically an illusion, just like security is. There's really no such thing. In fact, the more secure you try to make your life, the less secure it will be because you're always constantly worried about keeping or gaining and keeping security. So first of all, you have to think about why you're insecure. And I think most people never really grasp that whole concept, but it really stems from one main issue. And that is you're putting too much of the focus on yourself and not enough focus on other people. In other words, you're constantly feeling judged by others. So you're thinking, well, do I measure up? Is my playing great? Am I being a good leader? Am I setting a good example? And all of those things stem from you thinking about what other people are thinking about you. And that means you're putting all of the focus and all of your energy on yourself and the concept of measuring up. Whereas if you just start putting it on other people, and that means your focus, that means that you are in the act of helping other people get what they want first. And if you do that, I don't see any reason to be insecure about that. If you truly are coming from a place of authentic help, I'm, I'm really trying to help somebody get what they want, then how can you be insecure about that? There's nothing in there that could be remotely considered a problem as far as being insecure. So think about that. Are you putting all of the focus on yourself and the concept of showing off, measuring up, or just even the concept of bragging? Or are you actually in the game to help other people? Are you trying to help your bandmates succeed? If you do that, 
you can't really feel insecure about that. Okay, let's move on to question number three and get a little bit more practical about this. So which of these five skills do you think is the most important skill you need to be a great band leader? Number one, is it that you are a great player? Number two, do you know how to play all of the instruments in your ensemble? Number three, do you know how to arrange and write charts for that group? Number four, do you know how to conduct? <laughs> yes, I mean, obviously that's a skill. And finally, do you know how to lead? So which of those is the most important skill? And the answer is number six. Do you know how to lead? It's not about being the best musician. It's not about knowing how to play all the instruments. I know lots of band leaders that can barely play their way out of a wet paper bag, but they're great leaders because they know how to enroll and engage people and get things done, make a great ensemble, put good people together. It's not about all of the intrinsic skills that you could have, although those things are very helpful. It, it's a great idea as a band leader to be able to compose great music and arrange great music, but you can always hire people to do that or you can get people to do things for you just by volunteering. So it's really about the concept of leadership. I don't really have a ton of time to get into the whole area of leadership in this video, but there are many concepts that you need to grasp in order to lead other people. The definition of leader for me is really about people who think they know where they're going. So if you know what you're doing, in other words, you know what the outcome should be, then by virtue of the fact that you're heading down that road and you've got a specific destination, that makes you the leader, other people will just follow you. That's the way it works. Okay, question number four. What do the other players in your group want? What do they want? Not what you want. Yeah, of course, you want a great ensemble. You want it to sound great. You want to practice your leadership skills. You want to be a great arranger. You want to be a great player, all of those things. That's wonderful, but what do they want? <laughs> That's where you should be putting your focus. In fact, if we went back to question number two in the concept of insecurity, means you're not putting your focus on other people, you're putting it on yourself. So the question number four is, well, what do the people in your band want? Help them get what they want. That's the most important thing. And if you're starting an ensemble, maybe that's something you might wanna ask them as a group or individually. Say, well, what do you wanna get out of this? Just level with them. Just say, hey, listen, I might not be the greatest band leader on the planet, but I'm the one taking the initiative. And in order for this thing to work, I need to know what you wanna get out of it. It's a great question. Okay, number five, once you have all of these things in place, then how do you get started? How do you take action? And there's really only two ways to take action on anything, whether it's in my business life or in my professional jazz career life or anything that I've ever done in my life. There is two ways to take the appropriate action. Start obviously is important, but how do you actually do that? And the first thing is you should take advice only from people who have what you want. In other words, if you're taking advice from other musicians on how to be a leader, if that's not what they do, then that's not a great idea. And sometimes if you look at maybe your professors or teachers, if they're not practicing leadership in the real world with their own ensembles, maybe that's not the best advice. So I think that's why this video is great because I've been a leader for many, many years. And I can tell you that if you have specific questions, about leadership and the concept of building a jazz band, whatever size of ensemble that means, whether it's a trio right up to big band or even orchestra, I've led them all. And I'm not saying that to impress you, I'm saying that to impress upon you, how does one actually do that? And the answer is, yes, you must take the initiative, but you can't just dive into it. You need to take the advice from people who've actually done that before so they can help you through the initial stages all the way through to completion. And then once you've completed a project, then you can start giving advice to other people as well. And that's kind of how it works. The second thing is you have to help others get what they want. Now we've talked about this before. It's an important part of being a leader. It's really about serving the ensemble, serving the people that are in there and being helpful. And that's really what's important. So those two things, take advice only from people who have what you want. And number two, make sure along the way you help enough people get what they want. That's what makes a great leader. And I'm glad you stuck around until now. So this is the number six question and probably the most important one because there are three things that you could do 
that would automatically make you the leader. So the question is, what three things will make you the leader by default? Yeah, we've discussed a lot of things here and all of them are great, but this one just automatically makes you the leader. And that is you do the marketing, you get some gigs, which means you do the sales. And the third thing is you just carry out the plan, which is fulfillment, marketing, sales, and fulfillment. You know, the whole world of jazz is really just like any other business. You're getting gigs, you're getting paid for them, and you're using that money to build up the business, to buy better instruments, to buy better equipment, to do recordings, get some more music made, build a library of intellectual property, things that I've been doing for more than 40 years. It's about money. And I, I hate to bring that up in the whole context of jazz because, you know, at the end of the day, it's an art form and the whole concept of starving artist is something which has been perpetuated for years within the jazz music industry. So if you can get gigs and you can put the ensemble together and you can do those gigs and you can get paid, you can go get more gigs, that makes you the leader. And that's really the jazz industry. It's the people who decide to do the projects and go out and market it and get something happening. That kind of makes you the leader. So if you're willing to do those things, then my question to you is, would you be willing to ask me specific questions about how to go about anything that we've talked about in this video, especially the last one? How do I go about marketing? How do I sell something to somebody so that we can get a gig, so that we can get a tour, so that we can get a recording, so we can get a recording contract, something I've had before. So how do you actually go about that? Those are the real questions. And if you start asking those questions, you will be leader by default. Thanks so much for your time. I didn't do any playing in this video. I would suggest that you maybe check out many of the other videos here on my YouTube channel so that you can see that I'm in earnest and that I know what I'm talking about in terms of skill level and, and experience. So please check those out. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That would be great. And if you wanna subscribe to the channel, I'd love to have you. Just hit the little bell when you subscribe because you'll be notified of all of the other upcoming videos that we are making. Thanks again for your time, I really appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video.